Sam Brinton alluded to in my favorite comment of the day yesterday, which I just read, has been fired. He has been fired not after it came to light that he shows up to bondage fetish events and leads grown men around on dog leashes and dresses them up in weird little leather costumes. Not after uh, Sam Brinton shows up to White House events wearing stiletto heels and lipstick. Not after Sam Brinton steals a woman's jewelry, allegedly, at an airport and, and clothing and all, all of her possessions in her suitcase. But after he does that for a second time and is caught on camera doing it and becomes too much of a distraction that even the Biden White House has to fire him. According to the DOE, Sam Brinton is no longer a DOE employee, but the Department of Energy cannot comment further on personnel matters. Okay, good. Not only has the right been calling attention to this guy and saying, wait, what? On, oh, you're telling me this obviously deeply troubled lunatic is in charge of nuclear waste in the federal government. But even, even members of the LGBTQ plus community have warned about this guy for a long time. In LGBTQ Nation, not exactly a far right publication, the headline just came out is, has Sam Brinton's story always been too good to be true? Was Brinton's story contrived or embellished to manipulate high-profile leaders and elevate themselves into, oh, that's the, themself is the singular crazy pronoun, if you don't want to acknowledge that you were a man or a woman. So, but him, himself is what they mean, into the upper echelons of the LGBTQ plus activism. And there he is. And what's the story? The story is, well, Sam Brinton's told a few stories, but the big one, the central part of his personal narrative, his LGBTQ journey, is that Sam Brinton was subjected to conversion therapy. <sighs> conversion therapy. What is it? Nobody quite seems to know. But it's, he had the conversion therapy. Hmm, this was traumatic and it was awful. Except his story didn't quite hold up. He's been telling it since he was at the Treasure, Trevor Project, the National Center for Lesbian Rights, now in the federal government. It just doesn't quite he said that he came out to his parents at the age of 11, and then his father started punching him, and he went to the emergency room, and then he was sent to conversion therapy, and then they tried to beat the gay out of him, basically. But then his story started to change, because when he was asked about it, he said, who was the doctor? Who was the, what was the office? What was this? He refused to answer. And as LGBTQ Nation even acknowledges, they say, this is kind of odd. If such a place existed, there's a moral imperative to rapidly identify the abusive therapist and contact the authorities to stop the atrocities. Why was Sam Brinton the only, of, the only survivor of conversion therapy I've encountered since 1998 who refused to answer such questions? Not only had every other survivor provided this information willingly, but they were eager to fight back and shut down their own therapist or ex-gay minister. And, and so then Sam starts changing his story. He writes, changes the timeline of when he went to the so-called conversion therapy. It's just very clear to conservatives, to liberals, to LGBTQ activists. It's clear to anyone who's interested in the truth. This guy has made up his whole story. He's obviously a pathological liar. He's a thief. He's a, a deeply troubled, deeply confused man. And only after everybody in the country agrees on that, <laughs> from the most super straight conservative to the most LGBTQ left-wing activist, only then does Joe Biden say, okay, only after he's accused of two felonies, does Joe Biden say, okay, maybe we got to take him off the nuclear, nuclear waste <laughs> in the federal government. So a big part of Sam Brinton's story is about this thing called conversion therapy. But what is conversion therapy? Some people have in their mind that it's when you, you take gay guys and you, or little kids even, they often say it's done with little kids and you just basically attach them to electrodes. <laughs> you just electrocute them until they stop being gay or something. That obviously is, is not the case. That is not practiced anywhere. That, that's, that's kind of the image that the libs wanted to create for Mike Pence in 2016 because Mike Pence signed some law that had some healthcare provision that funded some kind of therapy that was completely misrepresented to suggest that it was this awful traumatic conversion therapy. But do you know what conversion therapy actually is? 
It's when a guy walks into a psychologist and says, hey doc, I'm a little confused about my sex and my gender. And I'm a man, but maybe I think I'm a woman. Or I'm a man, but, and, but I'm not really as attracted to women and I'm more attracted to men and I don't want to be. I want to be attracted to women. And doc, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help myself work through these, these feelings and this psychological confusion. If the doc tells that guy, that patient, that he is a man, say, hey, buddy, I know you're going through a lot of confusion, but you are a man. And so you, you're not really a woman. And it is sort of normal if you're a man to uh, have a relationship with a woman and then maybe get married, or if that is not amenable to you, maybe to remain chaste or celibate, if you're experiencing distress, because let's say your religious views tell you that you can't indulge same-sex attractions, but you have these attractions. So what are you going to do? I'm going to help you work through this in a way that is conducive with uh, your biological sex, our understanding of what sex means and gender expression, the religious views that you hold, the cultural values that we've had for many, many years. If, if the doctor says any of those things, that's evil conversion therapy. That's illegal in half the states in this country. If, on the other hand, the psychologist tells the patient, oh, hey, buddy, you're not really a buddy. You're a chick. You're a woman. You need to take a bunch of very powerful drugs. You need to head on over to that butcher down the street, and he's going to chop off your genitals, and you're going to put on high heels, and you're going to put on a bunch of lipstick, and you're going to pretend to be a woman now. If the psychologist does that, that's called gender-affirming treatment. That's health care. In fact, that's pretty much the only thing the psychologist is allowed to do in half of the states. Plus additional territory. So in more than half of the country, that's pretty much all the psychologist is allowed to do. Isn't that a little bit weird? In both cases, you've got a guy walking in to a psychologist saying, hey, I'm confused. I'm suffering from confusion, some distress. I'm being torn between two things. Obviously, he's experiencing that distress. Obviously, he's not secure in his views. If he were secure in his views, he wouldn't be going to the psychologist. So the psychologist is converting him to one thing or the other. It's just if the psychologist converts him to the view that men are men and ought to behave like men, that's evil, that's terrible, that's illegal. If the psychologist converts him to the view that men can actually become women and they ought to pretend to be a caricature of a woman and, and undergo painful mutilations of their body, that is, that's the good conversion. Does that make sense? Seems kind of like the opposite to me. Why is it the case that a, a, a man in this country is not allowed, in half the country at least, is not allowed to go into a psychologist and if he says, look, I'm experiencing sexual confusion, I think I'm a woman, but I want to recognize that I'm a man, or I'm experiencing sexual confusion, I'm attracted to men, but I want to try to mitigate some of those impulses and and be able to live a life that is chaste and does not lead me to indulge those desires. Why is a man not allowed to do that in America? It's not just that the psychologist is not allowed to practice reasonable psychology. It's that the patient is not allowed to get that care, which ironically is gender affirming care. When you tell a man he's a man, that's, that's affirming his gender. When you tell a man to behave like a man, that is affirming his gender. And yet today we call up, down and left, right and good, evil and evil, good. There's, there's a therapist who I had on the show years ago, years and years ago, because he came out with a book, Joseph Nicolosi Jr., and I've, I've been attacked for even talking to this guy because it turned out he's a conversion therapist, allegedly. He says that term is ridiculous. He refers to his reintegrative therapy. Joseph Nicolosi Jr. Uh, is just a guy who, if you come to him and you say, hey, doc, I'm a man, uh, but I want to I resolve my confusion and seem more like, more like a regular guy, he tries to help you through that. He is persona non grata. And He's been blowing the whistle on Sam Brinton for a long time. He said, Brinton claims he was in torture therapy as a young child for years and can't remember the therapist's name. He later claimed the therapy took place in his 20s, but even as he was attacking therapies that don't exist, he was engaging in sadomasochism and simulated bestiality bestiality with young men and women. Of course, no one cared about his credibility until he got caught stealing the luggage. Totally crazy. And there are a lot of squishes and libs who even identify themselves on the right who will say, well, I oppose conversion therapy. That doesn't mean anything. Conversion therapy, it's another example of the libs 
creating a brand, manipulating language to control our minds, to control the way we perceive the world, to, to win the debate before the debate even begins, which is the phenomenon that I describe in my book, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, number one national bestseller, a great Christmas present. Still plenty of time to receive it before Christmas. Don't take the, there is no such thing as conversion therapy. It's not real. Lock that one away with the tooth fairy, okay? All there is, is therapy. There's psychology. And the kind that is legal today is the one that tells men fake, false things. And the one that's illegal today is the one that tells men the truth. Does that make sense? No, I don't think so. Doesn't make sense at all. The rest of the show continues now. You do not want to miss it. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us. 